AO classification. Now, my friends, I have made a chart for you for you to understand this AO classification because this will be definitely asked you in the exam, possibly even in the viva. So, looking at this chart, the fear should go away. So when we start, just look out whether there is any displacement or dislocation. If so, it is AO type C and it will be classified as a translation type of injury. If there is no dislocation, then whether there is a tension band injury. We have already discussed about the tension band injury when we talked about the ligamentous injury. If yes, whether it is just anterior or posterior. Now if ever the tension band injury is anterior as I am trying to show you over here that is in the disc space it is a hyper extension injury. My friends see here this is type B3 when the spinal column will go in hyper extension it will forcefully open the disc space and this is type B3 and tension band injury in the anterior part of the vertebral column. What if this is in the posterior part? So you have to determine whether it is a osseo ligamentous disruption or just a osseous disruption. That is if ever there is associated ligamentous injury in the posterior part it will be classified as B2 as it is shown here. My friends try and distinguish B2 from this B1. As shown there is just bony elements that is involved in type B1 against the ligamentous involvement and the bony involvement in B2. I will repeat again so that you can remember type B1 has only bony involvement hence it is called the transosseous tension type of disruption against type B2 in which ligamentous structures are also involved hence it is posterior tension band failure. This type B1 in which there is just failure of the osseous structure is also called the chance fracture. We will talk about this in details. Now what if there is no tension band injury? In that case you have to look out for the vertebral body fracture. Now if there is a vertebral body fracture and posterior wall is involved, if so whether both end plates are involved, if yes it is a A4 fracture, if no it is A3. So Let's discuss this again. If ever both the end plates are involved, it would be a A4 fracture and a complete burst. If both the end plates are not involved, it will be A3 burst. So you have to understand that A3 and A4 are the ones which are having posterior wall involvement. which won't be in the other types that is A2, A1 and A0. So if the posterior wall is not involved you have to see whether both end plates are involved. If so it will be a A2 type of a fracture as seen here. If both the end plates are not involved, it will be a A1 fracture or the wedge fracture. If there is no vertebral body fracture, in that case it is classified as AO or an insignificant injury which may be just a spinous process fracture or a transverse process fracture. I will repeat so that you can remember. If ever there is vertebral body fracture, you have to see whether the posterior wall is involved or not. If so, it will be either type 3 or type A4. If the posterior wall is involved, look out for the end plates. If both the end plates are involved, it is A4. If one end plate is involved, it is A3. Similarly, if the posterior elements or the 
posterior body is not involved in that case if both the end plates are involved it is a2 and if only one end plate is involved it is a1 there were clinical modifiers that were defined by ao this was with respect to the management now m1 modifier is used to designate the fractures which have an indeterminate injury to the tension band structures which may be seen on the spinal imaging with or without the mri this is important so that we understand whether the ligament is insufficiency is going to help or not what does this mean it basically means on mri or any other investigation we have to understand whether the posterior structures or the ligaments or the plc complex is involved or not because this will play a key role in the type of surgery that we do which we are going to discuss m2 is a modifier which is important because it denotes any specific comorbidity that the patient is having for example if ever the patient is having ankylosing spondylitis or there are burns which are affecting the skin over the injured spine in that case we are going to use the modifier m2 because this is going to impact on the management again apart from this they also focused on the neurology in which n0 was a completely neurologically intact patient n1 is a transient neurological deficit which may no longer be present what does this mean this means when the patient presents or immediately after the injury there would be a deficit which has gone with time for example in a couple of hours or over a day the deficit has recovered on its own n2 is denoted by the radicular symptoms n3 is incomplete spinal cord injury or any degree of corda equina injury that is if ever there is injury to the caudal equinal nerve roots it will be classified as n3 n4 is complete spinal cord injury and nx is a neurological status that cannot be determined owing to sedation or head injury what were the limitations the first limitation was that this classification was complex because not each and every one was able to understand the morphology of the fracture the other limitation was inter and intra observer reliability it was seen that this reliability was questionable TLX classification or thoraco lumbar injury classification and severity score was proposed by Vaccaro et al. Now he had given three parameters and a score was supposed to be calculated according to which you can decide the management. The first parameter is fracture morphology, the second is integrity of the posterior ligamentous complex and the third is the neurological status. Now if ever it is a compression type of fracture it is given 1 if ever it is a burst fracture add a point so it will be two points if ever it's a translational or a rotational injury it is three points if ever it is a distraction injury it is given four points integrity of the posterior ligamentous complex if there is no injury it is given zero points if ever the injury is indeterminate it is two and a definitive injury is given three points along with this when we talk about the neurology if the neurology is intact it is zero if there is root injury it is one point if there is a complete spinal cord injury it is two if the spinal cord injury is incomplete it is three if there is a caudal equinal injury it is three points we have to calculate all these points and determine the total score if the score is between zero to three you can manage it conservatively If the score is 4 you have to decide that it is surgeon choice whether you opt for the non operative or the operative management if the score is more than 5 it is an indicator of surgery